The uh, Obama administration has provided various incentives through the Department of Education to states uh, for adoption of the Common Core Standards. Uh, do you support this approach to improving education in the United States? Or should states and local governments be left to take their own approaches to improve student learning? Well, you know what? When something is working, we support it in this country. We love innovation, and so do I. But when something is broken, we get rid of those who broke it. The federal government has gotten involved in, fed, in educating our students, and what have we seen as the result? And I'm as, a, I'm as an educator, I really wanted to look at this issue because it's important to me. What do I see? Today, our students are less competitive around the world. Our science scores are down. Our math scores are down. We're not doing as well. We're seeing countries in Europe pass us. This shouldn't be happening. If we go back and say, has Common Core succeeded? I don't believe that it has succeeded. I do not support Common Core. I support returning the decisions to local control, to parents, to the state where necessary. We have to recognize that when something doesn't work we don't keep doing the same thing over and over again. And as an educator, I just have to re-emphasize this. Common Core is a failure across the board. It's dumbing down America. Mr. Pelto? First off, let me just say that educational achievement and, uh, and an educated electorate is not a business decision. It's what's required to have a civilized society and a future for this country. Uh, we talked extensively about the military industrial complex. The education industrial complex is on the verge of doing uh, to our country's education system what the military industrial complex has done to us for the last 55 years. First under George Bush and then dramatically expanded under Barack Obama has been the privatization of public education. Uh, uh, the idea that every student needs to be tested every year in every grade when in fact every study has shown that that's exactly the wrong way to go. Uh, the common core, the idea that standards are important, there's nothing wrong with standards, but to then drive the entire system off of those standards means that we are having those tests done on a, on a product that there is no standardized curriculum. And so what you have are tests that are designed to fail the majority of students. Uh, we might want to have standards in this state but the tests that our students should be given should reflect Connecticut standards and Connecticut's curriculum. In fact, the Common Core tests two to three grades above level, which is why we saw such a dramatic decline in the test results. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Rio. We've seen this time and time again. I mean, you know, it's, it's, whether it's Common Core, whether there's no child left behind, it goes back and back and back, and the educational result is such that students, when they leave public schools because of federal involvement, no longer understand how exponential functions work. Therefore, they don't understand what kind of trouble they're going to be in with a useless degree they can't apply. So, that said, I think we've ran this experiment. It's failed. We look at the Tenth Amendment. We know the federal government has no involvement in education whatsoever. So, and by the way, it's in Connecticut's constitution, so it's not like everything's going to shut down without a Department of Ed. So, let's just leave it to Connecticut. They do a lot better anyway. Representative Courtney. So uh, again, just a couple sort of baseline facts, which is that Common Core was developed by governors. Okay, it was the the uh, No Child Left Behind Act was passed in 2001 when George Bush was in president was president. Common Core developed was developed years later. Jody Rell actually was the person who signed off on it for for the state of Connecticut. It is true that um, Secretary Duncan was a big proponent of Common Core, and when we hit that waiver period because states were failing under the No Child Left Behind Act, he was tying the waivers to adoption of Common Core. We just voted and passed the Every Student Succeeds Act, which explicitly states that the federal government cannot coerce states into adopting Common Core. It is in black and white. I know Daria doesn't like it when I say that, but it was a Republican amendment, actually, to the actually bill, and it, and it passed on a, on a large uh, bipartisan majority, and I support that. Uh, the annual testing, I, I would say to Jonathan, um, I was disappointed that that was in the bill. I actually supported an amendment for grade span testing, which would have lightened the load on kids uh, over a, a span of years rather than doing it every single year. Uh, it didn't make it in. But what was di what is different is that the accountability system is not going to be dictated from Washington. Uh, I'm going to have to, to the states. I'm to leave that to, to your that. rebuttal. Well, there's a lot that was I, said I here that I needed to kind of clarify. It. We'll, we'll get back to you for sure. So kind of keep that thought. It looked like Ms. Novak wanted. Uh, I'll make this real quick. 
What I have to say is SATs and ACTs have been redesigned along the lines of Common Core. Anyone who has a person in high school today knows that their kid needs to do well if they have to take that test. So what are they going to do? Of course they're going to move toward Common Core. It's failed in Georgia to the point where Georgia graduates of high school are not admitted to the University of Georgia if they went through the standard Common Core math program. Kids come out two years behind non-Common Core students in mathematics in this country. That makes us less competitive. Mr. Pelto. Uh, and in fact, the, the, the legislation, if it was just the legislation, we probably wouldn't be having some of these discussions, but the regulations that Secretary King is trying to rush before the new president comes online, uh, in fact, continues many of these same problems. The fact that you have mandatory testing, those tests are designed to be Common Core compliant, uh, so the states are kind of roped in to having to then shift to the Common Core. I mean, that, that, that we could spend the entire debate talking about this issue, and it's really about the privatization of public education is the greatest threat. But one quick example, the Common Core requires that 70% of English language arts be nonfiction and only 30% fiction. The idea that we should be removing fiction from our high schools uh, is, is not only an insult to the schools and the children and the parents and the teachers, but the importance of, of, of fiction in our, uh, the uh, development of right. our society. I'll give you, give you a lecture trying to finish that thought, uh, Mr. Real. It just this, this is really easy. Congress doesn't trust you with the education of your children, or they don't trust the state of Connecticut. I conversely do. And I promise so, to get back to Representative yeah, Courtney. So the Every Student Succeed Act gives the states the option about what testing system they want to choose. Again, Connecticut may still go with what they had before, but that's not dictated from Washington. And the accountability uh, piece of it in terms of what happens to states that uh, are showing uh, lower test scores under the statute is up to the state in terms of how they, they implement it. I uh, filed a comment with a number of other members of Congress objecting to Secretary King's interpretation, uh, and I agree, the rule that he's, he's uh, pursuing, in my opinion, violates both the spirit and the letter uh, of the law. And when I go back to Congress, hopefully with the support of this district, uh, I'm going to continue that fight on the Education Committee. All right. Thank you. Um, um, I think we, uh, we're going to try to get in. Uh, probably won't have time for rebuttal, but at least a minute each for one more question. And uh, next question is from Julia Bergman to Mr. Pelto. Uh, 